Hello everyone, welcome to another video and in today's video we will be talking about refraction of waves uh, of water waves actually, not the light waves which we will study in general wave properties. So this is one topic which is a bit difficult to understand uh, but I'll try to make it easier with all the diagrams that I can and uh, let's hope you will understand it better after you're watching the video. Okay. So this is from the chapter general wave properties in your O level course. The chapter is general wave properties where we discuss about all the properties of all waves in general and there is one topic where we discuss about refraction of water waves inside a ripple tank so before going to refraction of water waves we have to see what a ripple tank does what, what is a ripple tank why do we use it so a ripple tank looks somewhat like this it's a glass tank a rectangular glass tank uh, where you have a wooden bar which might be supported by an elastic band or might be supported with, with a motor. Uh, there is a light source above it. The glass tank contains water and below it there is a screen, right? So what happens is this wooden bar, it can move up and down. Like in this case, it's connected to an elastic band, right? So elastic band allows it to move up and down and keep some moving up and down. In other cases, you will find there is a motor attached here which causes it to move up and down automatically so as this wooden bar moves up and down it creates a ripple inside this tank which gives it the name ripple tank right so the water wave is created here this light source on top is putting the water shadows below on the screen so you can see shadows of waves which is formed below the screen and uh, I'm sure you all know what wave fronts are. So these are wave fronts which you can see on the screen. So this allows you, the ripple tank allows you to see the wave fronts as the waves in the water above is passing by. And from there you can measure the wavelength. You can observe any change in the wavelength. You can see the change in any direction of the wavelength and all. So this wooden bar is actually producing the waves and the light above is allowing the shadows to be formed below on the screen, a white screen where you can observe the wave fronts and can also observe their change in direction, uh, their change in size and all, right? That is why we use a ripple tank. Uh, now, how do we observe refraction of waves in a ripple tank? Well, so first thing is what is refraction of wave? What, what, what does refraction mean? So refraction of a wave is when it changes direction as it passes between two different medium, all right? Uh, when we go to light waves, we will see these are optically dense medium where light can travel with different speeds. When we're talking about water wave, we mean when water is traveling in a shallow region and in a deeper region. Okay, it's because in deeper region, the water has a different speed. In shallow region, the water has another type of speed. So when we talk about uh, uh, refraction of waves of water waves, we are actually talking about the movement of water from deeper to shallower region or vice versa it could be the opposite in either case the direction of the water changes now how does a ripple tank help us in uh, viewing the refraction of light so what we do is you see the depth of the water here this this is the depth right let's assume the water is filled up to the top and this is the depth of the water in the ripple tank what we do is we place an object inside this ripple tank let's say i place a uh, plastic bar or something over here or a perspex bar or something so that at this point the depth is reduced let me draw it again and uh, much more clear let me just use another color yeah so let's say i have placed a plastic bar just on this part for this part only okay plastic glass doesn't matter whatever i have placed so you see the depth here will be reduced. The depth is now only this much. Before it was the entire glass block. Now it's the depth is only this much. The water can pass above this particular glass block or plastic block, doesn't matter, but the depth is reduced. So here the depth was more. Now the depth is reduced. When water waves passes over this particular region from here to here, we will observe certain changes in the behavior of the water waves. We will see that the wave fronts show certain differences, certain change in direction or change in length as it passes from deeper to shallower and again from shallower to deeper. So let me just clarify it a bit more. When the water waves are traveling, 
this is the deeper part right this part is called the deeper part because the depth is more then we have a shallower part where we have placed a glass block uh, or a plastic block to make it a bit less deeper which is called a shallow region and then again when the water passes out of it it's again deeper region so what is happening when it's going from deeper to shallower and then from shallower to deeper again that's what we are going to observe in this video okay so let me show you a diagram first and then we can go into explanation this is how it looks if you're looking from the top if someone is viewing it from the top let's say you're standing here and you're looking at it from the top view from above this is how it looks like so as I explained, you have a glass block or a plastic block in between. So waves, waves were coming. Then there is a shallower region because the depth is reduced. And then again, you have a deeper region. So if you are looking from the side view, this is how it looked. So this is this is where the waves forming. The depth was more. This is the entire length of the tank. And then you placed something over here. If you're looking from the side, this is the side view. And you will observe when the waves enter this part, they show certain change in behavior from the side view. And from the top view, this is how it looks. And the actual picture would look somewhat like this. So the waves one are coming and you placed a glass block or something. This is again the top view. You're looking from the top of the tank. So if you're looking at the, from the top and you look inside this ripple tank, you look inside this ripple tank, this glass block, would look like this this is the glass block here all right so i guess i made it a bit clear now let us see what actually happens when this water travels from the deeper to the shallower region okay okay so this is the top view of a ripple tank okay so the ripple tank that we saw here you are looking at it from the top this is the top view that i have drawn here just the same that we have seen here this either this one or this one so you're looking from the top on the ripple tank and you see waves like this so these are the wave fronts we have already discussed what wave fronts are so these are wave fronts and uh, these are deeper and shallow regions are marked so this is deeper this is also a deeper region and in between you have a shallower region how did i make a shallower region by, by placing a glass block or any object uh, to, in, to reduce the depth of the tank or to reduce the depth from where the water will travel. So once you're observing it, what you will see is if the waves are traveling towards this direction, you can figure out the wave fronts from here. These are wave fronts and the distance between each wave front is called wavelength, right? So you see the wavelengths up to here is fine. But once it enters the glass block, there is a change in the wavelength. You will observe that the wave fronts are coming closer and the wavelengths are becoming shorter so as it enters the shallower region from deeper to shallower region one of the change that is observed is the wavelength or the lambda becomes smaller so from deeper to shallower the wavelength becomes smaller then again when it leaves the glass block when it's again into the deeper region we will again observe the wavelength has increased so if it's going from shallower to deeper that is the opposite we observe that the wavelength again becomes larger, just equal to what it was before, not larger than that. So that is one of the change which occurs when wave travels from deeper to shallower region, the wavelength decreases. All right. Now, we already know the definition of frequency. Frequency is the number of waves produced in every one second. So let's say the waves coming from here, there are 10 waves coming uh, in one second, right? 10 waves in every one second. So the frequency is 10 hertz. Now, 10 waves coming in one second, this value is not going to change. Doesn't matter if it's traveling in deeper region or shallower region. So if you're allowing 10 waves to go from here into the ripple tank, or you're producing 10 waves in every one second, 10 waves are going to pass each point in the tank in every one second. Doesn't matter whichever point you, took, you take, because you're producing 10 waves, each point of the ripple tank will show you that there are 10 waves passing in every one second through that point. Let it be deeper or shallower. That means the frequency over here is also 10 hertz, that is in the deeper region. The frequency in the shallower region is also 10 hertz. And the frequency again in this deeper region is also 10 hertz. You will observe that there are 10 waves passing in every one second throughout all the parts of this ripple tank. So the frequency does not change. Now we know V is equals to F into lambda, right? And uh, we are saying the wavelength is decreasing 
but the frequency is remaining constant. Whatever the frequency was, it's remaining constant. So when it's going from deeper into shallower, the wavelength is decreasing, frequency is remaining constant. As a result, you can see if frequency remains constant and wavelength decreases, what will happen to the speed of the wave? It should decrease. So it is always found that the speed or the velocity, we call it the speed of the wave, decreases as it enters shallower region. As it enters a shallower region, the speed of the wave decreases, right? So keep this in mind, as the wave enters from deeper to shallower region, the speed of the wave is reduced, okay? Why is the speed reduced? Because the wavelength is shortened. And if the wavelength is shorted, frequency remains constant, and the speed of the wave automatically gets reduced, right? So this is one of the property of refraction uh, when of water waves when it travels from deeper to shallower region. Now, there is one thing you have to observe here. This wave fronts which are traveling into the glass block, it's actually perpendicular to the glass block. The direction of the wave fronts traveling is perpendicular to the glass block's placement. See, the glass block is placed in such a way that they are perpendicular to each other. What if it is not perpendicular? What if the glass block was not placed perpendicular? Would the diagram look the same? No. Then there becomes some differences. We will observe that at that point, there are certain differences which are seen here, right? So that's what we will be observing now. Let's say the glass block is now placed at an angle other than 90 degrees. So you're looking again from the top. This is the top view. You're getting it right. Just redraw it. Okay. So this is the boundary. This is the deeper region. And the glass block is placed like this inside the ripple tank. This part is the shallower region. And again, you have a deeper region. Okay. So you're looking from the top, just like before, of the ripple tank. So yeah, this is the entire ripple tank here. But now the glass blocks are placed uh, at an angle other than 90 degrees. So the wave fronts won't make 90 degree with the direction of the glass block. What will happen now? So again, we draw the wave fronts. They're coming as in the deeper region. The wave lengths are a bit larger and they're traveling in this direction. And you see now it's not 90 degree. You cannot say that this is 90 degree. They are not 90 degree at all, right? So now what will happen? Will the wavelength decrease? Yes, the wavelength will still decrease. But there is something else that also happens. It is seen the wavelengths change direction. In which direction do they travel? For that, we have to draw a normal and figure that out. But keep this in mind, when water waves travel from deeper to shallower, one thing we have found is their speed decreases and their wavelength decreases. The other thing that happens is their direction changes. How does the direction change? In which direction do they travel or not? That we will cover in the next video. But in this video, we will have to keep it up to this, that when a wave travels from deeper to shallow region or shallower to deeper region, the wavelength decreases, the speed of the wave decreases, but the frequency remains constant. If it goes from shallower to deeper region, the wavelength will increase, the speed increases, but again, the frequency remains constant because frequency tells us how many waves we are forming in every one second and that is not going to change if the wave is traveling in deeper region or shallower region okay so i hope the basic idea of ripple tank is clear to all of you what is a ripple tank how does it help us in observing the behavior of the wave and what is refraction of wave uh the basic part of it is at least clear with, when it travels from deeper to shallower or shallower to deeper region and uh, the next part the change in direction that will be discussed in our next video okay so stay tuned and uh, keep watching the video so that you can understand better. All right. Thank you, everyone.